The Dell Alienware Aurora line is some of the best pre-built PCs or gaming PCs, period, arguably. While they do have a lot to offer in sheer performance, they're not perfect. They have some issues out of the box. I'm gonna walk you guys through some of the modifications that I've made on my R11 back there, and these apply to the R9, 10, 11, as well as the new R12. Most of these upgrades are cheap or free and very easy to install. Let's get it. So starting off the list, the stock cooling of the case or chassis as Dell likes to call it on the R9 through R12 is borderline bad, which will affect your CPU, GPU, RAM, motherboard, PSU, basically every single component inside that case. This comes down to a couple factors. There's only one 120 millimeter intake fan and one 120 millimeter exhaust fan. That's not a lot, not to mention it has that compact wedge design, which is larger than a small form factor case, but smaller than a mid-tower ATX. It's kind of right there in the middle. Now Dell claims about 10% better stock cooling than the R9 and prior. Yes, I know the R9 shares that same case design, but the R10 through 12 supposedly have about 10% better cooling due to them moving around the internal components a little bit, using different fans, but it's still not great. So some of the things you can do is to add a second intake fan to the front or add a second exhaust fan on the top for kind of a push-pull method which will suction air and kind of works in conjunction with that wedge shape to get air to get the hot air out of your case quickly it is very very cheap and easy we have done that on this channel here I will have that video linked in the description below so you guys can follow along the second one would be if you open up your chassis and look on the motherboard if you are missing VRM or voltage regulator module heat sinks or MOSFETs on there that's kind of an issue. That can actually cause crashing, that can cause operating system instability issues. If you're noticing any stuttering during gaming and you cannot pinpoint where the issue is coming from or your PC is just crashing altogether and then rebooting itself, if you open up your chassis and you do not have VRM heat sinks, that is probably the issue. So the voltage regulator module is on the actual motherboard itself. And sure enough, what that does is regulates the incoming voltage from the wall or your ups, uninterruptible power supply, your surge protector, whatever your PC is plugged into. As obviously the output of the wall outlet is only one specific voltage. And obviously all the components inside your chassis need different voltage, your CPU, your GPU, everything needs a different voltage to run optimally. So the VRM on the motherboard is constantly working to regulate the voltage. So that component gets hot. If you do not have those aluminum fin heat sinks, well, they're gonna get hot as hell. Now on the R10, R11, and R12, if you do go with a water-cooled CPU, which I strongly recommend, right out of the box, just getting Dell's AIO or all-in-one cooler, as again, the stock cooling on this case is not great. So going with a water-cooled CPU is definitely the play. And if you do get the water-cooled CPU, it should come with those heat sinks already installed. But if you don't have them because you upgraded from air-cooled, or for some reason Dell didn't include them, fret not, Amazon and Dell sells them for extremely cheap. They will be linked in the description below. The next one, my Alienware comrades, is if your operating system is running a little sluggish, a little slow out of the gate, it is probably because of Dell's bloatware. Now, I have tried other pre-built PCs, and honestly, Dell isn't that bad. However, there are a ton of programs that you are gonna wanna uninstall right off the get-go. The first time you start up your Alienware, I would recommend registering your motherboard uh, you do not need to manually look at the serial number or anything. It does it all software wise. You launch a program that is called My Alienware. It'll automatically register it, which activates your warranty. After that, you can uninstall that program. If you're not going to be remote playing with your cell phone to your PC, you can uninstall the Alienware Mobile Connect. There is an Alienware store. Think of it kind of like the Apple store. Basically, it just comes pre-installed on your Mac or whatever. Same thing with the Alienware. It's just trying to get you to buy additional Alienware products. They're mice, they're keyboards. They even have a gaming chair. Go ahead and uninstall that bad boy you don't need it honestly the only alienware program that i would leave installed is acc or alienware command center i have done a full tutorial of that awesome program it actually is a very good control center to control everything from the lighting the rgb lighting on the front of your case to overclocking yes alienware does allow and even support overclocking the cpu gpu and ram directly from their program you can set up sound profiles you can set up power saving profiles you can set up audio profiles it does the work Works. That video is also linked in the description below. I'm going to get you guys binge watching my content today. Next up, this is specifically for the R9. However, it has happened on some of the later models as well. But however, if you are losing wall power randomly and your PC is completely shutting down, you probably have a faulty PSU or power supply unit. You can contact Dell. There was an active recall for quite some time and they are still honoring it to my knowledge. So let them know, hey, 
I have an R9 and it's crashing on me. It's not getting any power from the wall. You probably have a faulty stock PSU and they will replace it for you. The next one, a lot of Alienware Aurora owners are reporting very, very crappy Wi-Fi speeds right out of the gate. Now, obviously, if you can use Ethernet, that is, of course, the play. You'll get more consistent and higher peak up and down speeds. However, maybe you're in an apartment. Maybe you're in a rental house where you cannot drill into the drywall and put Ethernet drops. Totally understandable. But the Alienware Aurora series has a pretty good killer Wi-Fi a great marketing name, but they have killer Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, which are actually pretty good. However, when you first get your Dell out of the box, it needs to be updated. So make sure you update all of your drivers. You can do this through the My Alienware application, or you can go into Windows settings and then software and updates, and it will also give you Alienware and Dell specific updates in there as well. And that's just good practice period. Whenever you get a new PC, cell phone, console, any electronics good, you wanna make sure you're updated to the latest firmware and that everything is getting software optimized. The next one, and this is specific to if you are running a 3080 or 3090, especially the Founders Edition cards. Now, granted, if you get a 3080 or 3090 or any of the NVIDIA cards for that matter, inside of a Dell Alienware, it is a specific card that is, well, proprietary or specific to Dell or Alienware. It is very similar to a FE or Founders Edition card. However, they use a different heat block on the top, kind of to dissipate heat and push it towards that exhaust fan, which is on the top of the tower and they also use two fans on the bottom. It's a pretty good design. However, the cooling is not the best, especially if you're gonna be mining with your GPU or certain games that are video RAM or VRAM intensive, you will see very, very high VRAM temps. Well, more accurately, you won't see them but just know that they are there. You need a special software program. I will have one linked in the description below. It is free. That will let you see your VRAM temps or if you do use the nice hash miner, which is what I use to crypto mine with when I'm not gaming or video editing with my PC, you will notice, wow, okay, my core temperatures say I'm at like 60 degrees Celsius. That's totally acceptable. But my video RAM's at 120 degrees Celsius. That's cooking, boys. How you're gonna remedy this? It is a little scary. I'm not gonna lie, but get your big boy or big girl pants on. You are going to disassemble your GPU and install new thermal pads and paste, specifically the paste. That is what made a huge difference for me. Now when I am mining Ethereum, my uh, VRAM temps went from about 120 to an average of about 90, which is way better. I do have a video tutorial walking you through how to do a thermal pad and paste change that will be linked in the description below. So the next one, and this is a very interesting one, a lot of Alienware Auroras, the brand new ones, your brand spanking new R11 or R12 that you spent 26, $3,000 on, come to your house pretty dirty, pretty dusty, pretty, uh, they need a bath. So I did the unboxing of my Alienware R11 the day that I got it. That will be linked in the description below as well, of course. And she was pretty dusty, not to lie, which is kind of weird considering they have an actual build timer on their website showing you your PC is being built to your specifications. So either the lie detector test shows that is a lie. And honestly, they had these PCs stockpiled on a shelf somewhere in a warehouse or after they got done building it, they take it out back and swing it around the back of their pickup truck because it was dirty. Those are all the common issues with the Alienware Aurora series that I have encountered through the forums and whatnot. However, I'm sure there are more out there. Drop in the comments section below if you guys are experiencing any of these issues and the community here at Gamer Heaven, including myself, will step in to aid you. If you are having some serious issues with your Alienware Aurora, especially if it's brand new out of the box, there are three things that I strongly recommend. One would be checking the forums online. If you literally type in your issue into Google, there is most likely a Dell Alienware Aurora support forum where there are tons of users that have had the same exact issue issue you have, and there's probably some pretty sweet workarounds. A lot of times it's something pretty silly and pretty easy. Secondly, don't feel afraid to reach out to Dell. You just bought a brand new pre-built, and from what I've seen, their customer service is actually pretty good. If you do have an issue, they generally report back to you in about 24 hours and have a workaround for you. Not to mention they can do in-house calls, which is usually included for the first year of your purchase. You can, of course, get an extended warranty, which I never ever do because I like to tinker anyway. So if it breaks, that's an opportunity for me to bust out the monkey wrench and have a good time with her. Dell will generally try and do some remote uh, assistance over the phone with a technician, which a lot of time doesn't speak English, but whatever. Uh, you, if you can't fix it that way, they will send a technician out to your house, a Dell tech, or a lot of times it's not actually Dell. It'll be something like Geek Squad or whatever, or whatever tech support team they have in the area that is an authorized uh, Dell slash Alienware tech crew will come out and work on your PC for you. And last but certainly not least, if it all comes down to cooling for you or styling, you don't like the way the Alienware looks and you basically just bought it to get your, your hands on a brand new 3080 or 3090 or a brand new 11th gen i9 or to get the latest and greatest AMD Ryzen CPU or you just got a hell of a deal on the internals and you couldn't pass it up as Dell does run a lot of promotions where you can pick up a pretty sweet rig for 
very respectable. You can always do a case swap. Now, I did make an entire video about can you case swap an Alienware Aurora PC? The short answer is yes, but not completely. Getting the motherboard out is kind of a pain in the ass. And same thing with the PSU. However, however, the most expensive components of a PC build, generally, the GPU and CPU, can very, very easily be removed and put into another case. And there is a very strong possibility that in the near future, probably within a couple months here, we will be case swapping my Alienware Aurora R11, getting that 3080 out of there, getting that 10th gen water-cooled i7 overclocked to five gigs out of there, getting that 32 gigs of RAM out of there and dropping her into an aftermarket case. Something a little bit bigger, a little bit quieter, a little nicer, a little sexier. So make sure you boys subscribe so you don't miss that. If you guys enjoyed this video, it helped you out with some of your issues. Liking it helps it to get seen by more people, more Alienware Aurora owners. So this video can reach and assist them as well, which in turn helps me grow this little channel, which I do greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover a ton of news in the gaming community and industry, as well as tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.